The uh, playoff rankings came out last night. As a Georgia guy, are you surprised to see a team with a 25-game winning streak not ranked number one? Not really. You know, I do have a hard time figuring out what the committee values because you yeah. think about if it's strength of schedule, then it makes sense to have Ohio State at one. But then if, if that's also the case, then I don't know how you could have Georgia at two or Michigan at three because their strength of schedule is terrible, right? Yeah. I think Georgia's at 100 and Michigan's at 111. But um, we also know that you know, Ohio State and Michigan will be playing one another, and Georgia's strength of schedule is about to ramp up significantly with uh, the Missouri. Georgia will play three ranked teams that are mm-hmm. currently in the top 17 in the college football rankings. So um, maybe the committee saying, look, good job. You played well without your best player. And uh, it seems like they valued that given where they put Texas. Um, you know, Texas is ranked above Oklahoma, a team – that beat them right. uh, not that, that long ago. So um, it is not always easy to reconcile the committee's logic, but uh, the good news is it doesn't really matter until the end of the season anyway, so it's just a kick in the pants up until then. Uh, with Georgia, is this the kind of thing that's going to motivate them, or are they just so tunnel vision they don't care? You know, I think that Georgia does a really good job of finding ways to get motivated. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think not being number one could help. I don't know that they need it necessarily. You'd like to think they wouldn't because Missouri's proven to be a very good team this year. Um, one that hasn't been challenged significantly. They got the LSU game that resulted in a loss. But otherwise, um, you know, a team that, that I think there's still, from a schedule standpoint, some questions. Kansas State's a really good football team. They were able to get that win um, in rather dramatic fashion with a 61-yard field goal. So, um you know, if Georgia needed extra motivation, if the number two ranking is enough for them, great. But you'd like to think that wouldn't be necessary versus right. a team that uh, is dangerous in their own right. Uh, Alabama sitting there at eight. I, I mean, that seems like they have a path if they went out, right? They do have a path. Yeah. There's no question. I mean, I think yeah. that given, you know, when Oklahoma kind of self-selected with their loss, uh, you're looking at a, a, a guarantee at a one-loss Big 12 champion, right? So. Uh, it, it limits the number of potential undefeateds coming out of uh, the major conferences, right? So you got the FSUs, you got a couple of candidates in the Big Ten, um, maybe one out of the Pac-12. Mm-hmm. So uh, I do think that that path makes a lot more sense. I don't know that you get as much bounce out of the Big 12 in that championship game as you would if you're Alabama facing, let's say, an undefeated Georgia, um, which would be their the best possible scenario for them, I think, right. uh, from an Alabama perspective. So. Yeah, the path is very real. I think it's very viable. And given the way that uh, the Southeastern Conference has performed in playoffs, uh, I think you're doing the college football fan a disservice if you don't have a representative of this conference in there. Alabama LSU on Saturday, what's kind of your breakdown on that? What do you think needs to happen for Alabama to win, LSU to win, that sort of thing? Yeah, well, this will far and away be the best defense that LSU has seen um, uh, this season. And so I, I do think that this is a defense that can get stops. And it's an offense that has shown that it can be explosive and it can climb out of holes. Um, so that's all important. The question will be is, um, you know, can you maintain possessions? And I don't mean like sustained drives, but just don't give your opponent, uh, from an Alabama perspective, give your opponent extra possessions with turnovers because uh, they are dangerous. I mean, Jaden Daniels, when you look at this offense, I don't know that there's a more dangerous ball carrier, runner, Mm-hmm. in this conference than the quarterback for LSU. Mm-hmm. And I can't think of another season where I would say that. Um, there have been some great runners in this conference, but Jaden Daniels, I think, is maybe the most dangerous. I think the QB run game will be a, a big piece of it and whether or not Alabama can contain that. I mean, Alabama offensively, it seems like they've improved as the season has gone on. It does. Uh, and I think they've kind of figured out what they do better than maybe other elements uh, of, of their offensive play. They're, I think they're playing better together. Uh, You've got a guy, a quarterback, that um, uh, obviously knows that he's the starter, but I think also probably has a a firmer grasp of the things that he likes, doesn't like, and does well. And as a play caller, if you're Tony Reese, that's easier, makes his job easier too. And the guys up front have have performed better. It's still not, I think, the product that many people anticipated. Whether those expectations were fair or not, it's a different conversation. Um, But it is a unit that's playing better football right now. Last thing, Auburn got their first SEC win under Freeze last week. Just where do you feel like they are at right now? You know, it's a, they're a team that uh, I think from a, a personnel standpoint is, has been challenged. 
Um, you know, the passing offense has not uh, as yet been what I think many would have hoped it could be. Um, but you think that, you know, perhaps this is a chance for them to build on some success this Saturday.